Okay. Ah, Kaiser Kempo days. Um, I remember more than any technique, I remember the culture of Kaiser Kempo. Um, I remember it was mainly locals, probably. There was one Howley guy besides me, and I, don't, I can't remember his name. That was, he had a school somewhere. He was some, but everybody else um, that, that had schools and trained, they were local. They were Hawaiian locals, dark skin. Um, so I felt out of place. There was one other Howley guy, Kevin Coleman, um, who's one of my good friends to this day. But, but it, it was just, it was a local art with a bunch of local guys. There wasn't a lot of Miyagi type stuff, like uh, you know, like when you go in a Kajakempo school, there wasn't there wasn't uh, there wasn't all of the, the the ceremonial you know stuff. It was more of a like respect to a to a tough guy, you know, like you you respect him, but it was more tough a respect than like in sometimes in 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 traditional martial arts like karate and stuff. It's like you're you're. You're bowing and, and you're showing respect for an elder, not a big tougher guy. So Kaja Kempo is like you had the respect. You know we didn't use the uh, Asian uh, terminology like Sifu or, or Sensei or anything like that. It was like it was Chief, Professor, Master, Grandmaster. That was that was that was what we called our instructors. Um, but it was just, it was kind of like a, more of a camaraderie, you know? And even though there was katas, which I didn't like and never liked, and my instructor didn't like them, like they would do katas, but they were, they were harder katas. Everything was like, ah, ah. And then you, there'd be a throw or a trip or a sweep or a takedown. And then there'd be, ah, and there'd be like, finish him on the ground. There was like an animal instinct, which our instructor used to talk about a lot, like animal instinct. And they want you to go after him and kill the guy. Um, so it was, it was just, it was a rough place, uh, but I loved the, the camaraderie. I loved the, the culture. I loved being around those guys. I felt safe, you know? Um, and even though I was the Howley guy, I was accepted. So I felt, I felt really safe. I could have done away with the techniques, like this technique called the shooting star. You know, I, I couldn't understand why we did it, you know, and I'd be like, I'd ask my instructor, why are we doing this? And he would just look at me and say, shut the fuck up and just keep doing it. Um, and then we'd have katas, which I hated, but we didn't have to do much. My instructor didn't like katas very much either, so we didn't have to do many. But I, I had to do too many for me, I hated them. So we did a couple katas, and some grab arts, punch tricks, tricks, tayokas, and they were choreographed, and they were tough. I liked doing them, but I knew that I wouldn't be choreographing anything in the street, so they kind of, I kind of did them knowing that I wouldn't do them just like that, but they were fun. There was a lot of contact in Kajikipo. Like you, you get hit a lot. I mean, you, you'd be injured a lot and we didn't wear anything on our hands, you know? So that's what I remember. I loved it. I was, I was intimidated for, you know, in the beginning, but then I started just not being intimidated and just, there's nowhere I'd rather be. Nowhere I'd rather be. Every day after school, I'm on the bus going. There's no, there's no second thought. Oh, I got a tummy ache. Oh, I got this. I would just be there. And on the weekends, I'd go. And, you know, and sometimes Chief would be there. And he'd let me train. And if he wasn't there, I'd catch the bus home. But I, don't know, I think it was more the culture and, uh, and just the camaraderie that I loved. And the only thing I didn't like about Kajikempo was kata.